All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to join our session. This session is about Kubernetes native data orchestration framework, Flood. Flood is an open source project which is started from September last year. The founders and the maintainers are from Alibaba Cloud and University, Alexio. They have a lot of experience in Kubernetes in, and big data and AI areas. First, let me introduce the presenters today. My name is Yang Che. I'm from Alibaba Cloud Kubernetes team, and I'm the founder of the I'm the co-founder of the Flood community. Another speaker is Yuan Dongxie. He is the key contributor of Flood project, and he is working at Tencent Cloud now. Um, both of us contributed to Flood project from very beginning. In this session, first, I will talk about Flood project itself, including the history of the project, why we want to start create such a project, and what problems we'd like to solve. And, and Yuan Dong will go through the overall architecture as well as some major design thinking behind the, the, the architecture. And he will also give a demo to show how Flood speeds up the de deep learning applications in the end. We also will discuss the roadmap of the Flood project. We'd love to invite all of you if you are in interested in this project. Now let's start it. In this session, in, in the recent years, we noticed that there is a big trend in big data and AI areas. According to Gartner's prediction, 70% of the AI applications will run on containers and the Kubernetes platform by 2023. In addition, the new stack technology reported the Google will replace scheduling Spark application from YAR to Kubernetes. By reviewing the, the changes in data-driven app, application companies, we found, we found that the changes took place, took place in architecture level from three dimensions. First, the location relationship between the computing resources and the storage service. Second, the diversity of the storage and the workload types. Third, the deployment mode of computing is changing from fixed mode to dynamic mode. Let's, let's take a look. In 2010, MapReduce tasks run on HDFS is mainstream and they are coupled type, tightly. In 2015, task types are gradually extend, extended from Hadoop to Spark, Flink, and TensorFlow. The storage types were also enriched to various types such as HDFS and Ceph. Computing and storage were separated, but at this time, the, applica the application is still on fixed mode deployment without any flexibility and containerization capabilities. Now, in 2020, we can see there are also a lot of changes. Tasks and storage types will become more diverse, more diverse. Disaggregated computing and storage is the mainstream. And the environment will also become hybrid cloud and Kubernetes. One of the most typical features is flexibility. Computing is no longer fixed on certain nodes. This architecture can bring many benefits like on-demand 
creation and automatic elastic scaling the computing resources. As this data application deployed into Kubernetes cluster, it improves the developer's productivity and saves cost. But it also brought out many new technical challenges, such as it's not good at handling heterogeneous data sources, and it brings data I.O. latency due to the disaggregated computing and storage architecture. Furthermore, it lacks the capability of being aware of data affinity while doing the workload scheduling. These challenges slow down the promotion of data-driven applications running on the cloud-native platform like Kubernetes. Okay, let's go to details. The first, let's take a look at the first challenge. Multiple data storage service in hybrid cloud. Data-driven applications need to access the underlying heterogeneous storage architecture, different data service, and the various low-level data access APIs like POSIX and HDFS. But with the development of the business, new AI models to build requires accessing data across different storage systems from various business departments together. For example, some data is from Ceph, some data is from HDFS. How to use them together in the same application? That's the developer have to write different data access API in the same application. So we introduce the site, a high level abstraction of the data, hiding the details of different data sources implementation. Second, Slow data I.O. This is because the cloud platform uses a disaggregated computing and storage architecture to introduce I.O. overhead, which will make the application very slow and the computing resources like CPU, GPU idle. In addition, running on elastic cloud instance, which is creating and destroy on demand, also lead to the failure of the data locality. And this, this behavior result, the remote data access, even we already have cache in the last run. Moreover, the bandwidth Online of the storage services such as HDFS, Ceph, also affects the data access performance. To solve this problem, we need to speed up the data access through elastic, data, elastic distributed caching. The last inefficient workload schedule. It's because the current Kubernetes scheduler is not aware of the data location, so will not reuse the existing cache information in the cluster, in the cluster level, and is also not able to prefetch the data intelligently for the workload before the run started. In order to solve this problem, we design a data aware scheduling strategy on Kubernetes coordinate to coordinate the applications with the cache runtime automatically. Now, let's see what's fruit indeed. First, we provide data set 
abstraction that allows the pod to access multiple independent storage systems through the, system, the same POSIX and HDFS APIs interface, rather than communicating to each individual storage system. The pod can delegate can delegate this responsibility by connecting through Fluid, which will handle this underlying storage systems. Second, under the hood of the dataset abstraction, we are able to make the cache worker auto scale and portable. In the end, the information of the dataset can also be used by the Kubernetes scheduler to improve the data affinity schedule. So, Fluid is an elastic data abstraction and acceleration platform in cloud native environment. And Fluid is also a CNCF sandbox project and is also an open, open source community. There are many contributors from different companies and they are working together to discuss the features and contribute code. In the next part, Yuan Dong from Tencent Cloud will introduce the fluid architecture and how to use it and the roadmap of the commun community. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Yuan Dong Xie from Tencent Cloud. Thanks to Yang Tse for explaining what the Fluid project can solve. Now, let me introduce the architecture of Fluid. From top to bottom, first, the user needs to define two custom resources. One is data site, and another is runtime. The relationship between data site and the runtime is one on one. So far, we support three kinds of runtime, a luxury runtime, Jindo runtime, and the GoSFS runtime. And inside the Fluid operator, there are two major components. The one on the left is the Fluid Controller Manager. It is responsible for scheduling data site. In Fluid, we convert the scheduling problem of this site into the scheduling problem of data acceleration engine. It contains three components. The first is data site controller. It manages the life cycle of this site and including creation, bounding, and unbounding with runtime and the deletion. The second one is Runtime controller. It manages life cycle of runtime, including creation, scale in, and scale out, catch privilege, and clean. The luxury runtime is one of the runtime implement. The third one is volume controller. It is responsible for the creation and the deletion of data volumes related to the data site. On the right is the application scheduler. It is responsible for assigning the pods to appropriate node with the information of the data catch. There are two components, catch code locality plugin and the prefix plugin. Catch code locality plugin will schedule the job to the catched node intelligently no need the user to specify it. And the perfect plugin will notify the runtime to perfect the data to a specified node, which the job will consume it. Next, let's quickly introduce the use of Fluid. The core component in Fluid is data site, which is essentially a CRD and provide abstraction of data. The operation of creating a data site is very simple. Data source from IDC and the cloud can be accessed through a unified interfaces 
and through the CRD definition. At the same time, users can define the scheduling information of data. The following example comes from a real customer AI training case. Its training data is relatively large and the data digitization is completed. It is placed on cloud object storage like S3. But the validation data is sensitive and cannot be placed on the cloud. It needs to be placed on, on the IDC storage, like safe. On one hand, Fluid CRD provides a unified view, and on the other hand, it provides the ability to accelerate the distributed catch. So node affinity, you can dynamically move data, save data to GPU instance on the cloud at the time of training and accelerate data access. When the training is not required, data can be migrated to low cost CPU nodes, avoid the use of GPUs and network dedicated LAN. The method of creating data site is very simple. The user only need to define the YAML field as shown in the top right of the finger and run it. Once created, you can see the total amount of data in the data site and how much data can be catched in total and the catch ratio. So data information can be used to trigger elastic scaling later. And the data site can also cite data source from OSI's calls S3 HDFS safe all can be accelerated through distributed catch and can also accelerate exciting PVC, P um, means persistent volume claim. In this example, we use a look show as the runtime to accelerate the data site. If you need to deploy an application that uses the data site, you only need to, need to specify the name of the data site at PVC and the scheduler will select a property node based on the data, data catch information. Select node with catch capabilities first and then select the nodes with more catch data. And this is transparent to the end user. At the same time, we also support automatic and elastic expansion of data side catch volume. In this example, we also use a luxury catch engine as the default runtime. By default, when the data catch ratio reaches a certain percentage, data evaction will be triggered, which will affect the throughput of data access. Therefore, we provide an automatic expansion mechanism. When the data catch reaches a certain percentage, we need to expand the distributed catch pod to provide great catching capability. In this demo, we will show how to use Fluid accelerate the machine learning training job. And we will compare the training job speed and the final accuracy result of the task. And we will also put this demo on GitHub for your reference. First, let's take a look at the factor of directly reading training data through object storage for training. Here, you need to define the PV and the PVC of object storage in advance and the CSI driver of PV needs to be designated as object storage. After creating PV and PVC, we can view the data site through the Kubeflow Arena command line.
Next, we use Arena to submit deep learning tasks. Here, we specify the data parameter as the data set name. We will check the log of training task. We can see the image loading speed during training is about 638 images per second. And the final training accuracy of top file is 92.26 percentage. The enter task runs for a total of one hour and four machine, and every machine has eight V100 GPU card. Let's take a look at the training effect after cache acceleration through fluid. Here we take the Alexio cache engine as an example. First, we define the data site, specify the source address of the training data storage in the cloud object storage. After creating the data site, you can also view it through Arena command line and create deep learning tasks in the same way. We can see that we can see that image loading speed during training is about 2,800 images per second, and the final training accuracy of top file is 92.5 percentage. Comparing the two experiments, it is fine that without affecting the final accuracy of training and the use habits, use fluid can comprise the training time of the task from one hour to 24 minutes, and the training speed is increased by 4.5 times. Up to now, we have released version 0 0.6.0, .0, which mainly satisfied the use cases of data infrastructure engine, who can simply and effectively use catch to accelerate AI application. When version 1.0 is released, we hope that data infrastructure engine can achieve performance acceleration of the big data and AI workload without having to care about data management. In order to achieve this goal, we need to implement the following features before wishing 1.0. The first is to further accelerate the big data application on Kubernetes through fluid and on the basis of already supporting AI applications. The second is improve the locality of data through scheduling optim optimization, thereby improving the efficiency of data access. Meaning through the scheduler, comprehensive scheduling of data and workload. The third is to ensure the ability to manage the life cycle of data sites in large-scale application scenarios through performance and stability optimization in the community's environment. After introducing the 1.0 release, the specific plan can be divided into the following parts. The first part, automatic operation maintenance and observability. In order to ensure the stable operation of the system through component self-recover, multi-master support, and smooth upgrade to achieve runtime availability. 
through various declarative CRT, such as the metadata backup and the recover, the catch migration, the preworm, etc., to achieve the purpose of automatic operation and maintenance. By talking with Prometheus, it automatically collect data site indicators to ensure the system monitoring and learning capabilities. The second part, orchestration through the data site scheduling strategy, such as the affinity or tolerance, scheduler the cache to a desired node. In addition, the cache location information is reported to guide the workload scheduling to nodes further speed up the data access. Part three, most runtime support. Concurrently, the community has supported a luxury Jindo IFS and a good IFS patch engine. Part four, fluid agent, which can obtain node cache information through agent pool or push model, can also implement cache clean and other operations through the agent. Etc. Part five, elastic scaling. Through the definition of elastic scaling strategy, relies to the horizontal and the vertical expansion and the contraction of the catch instance to adopt to the scenarios of workload elastically. Part six, application access model. By supporting fields means the field system in user space interfaces and HDFS means high-level compatible field system interfaces. Flows can play a role in AI and the big data scenarios. The community is currently developing steadily and there are currently more than 18 contributors from different companies and organizations. If you are interested in participate and had questions, you can contact us through CNCF Slack and search Fluid Channel. Or you can contact us through GitHub. We will hold a community meeting every two weeks on Wednesday in Beijing time. We will discuss the progress of some features and share proposals at Cadre. At the same time, you can visit our, our website for more information. Welcome to join us. At present, many companies have, have already used Fluid in production environments. For example, voice AI company Unisound, autonomous driver AI company Hamalti AI, social network company Weibo, and the information service operator China Telecom are all using Fluid to accelerate AI workload and security-related internet company 361 is using Fluid to accelerate big data applications. At the same time, Alibaba Cloud and Tencent Cloud also integrate Fluid acceleration service on a container platform based on Kubernetes. I would like to thank you for your time and open up for question and answer. If you have any question here, thank you for joining.